CLNS Media Patriots Roundtable. I'm your host, Nick Qualius. I'm here with Marvazan and with Mike Molino. So, guys, the Patriots right now, two and five. They look like a mess. A mess. In the one, not the one, the weakest spot of this team, that we can all agree, is the receiving core. The wide receivers on this team are booty. They are brutal. It's a tough watch. And, you know, Nikhil Harry's out, Julian Edelman's out, whatever. You you shouldn't lose two guys and then just have absolutely nothing. Have a wasteland of receivers. Although, Bird, Damari Bird is looking pretty solid, and he's looked like that since the start of the season. But everybody else, and Jacoby Myers looked decent. But you need more than just decent at the receiver position. And let's face it, when Edelman and Nikhil Harry are both there too, especially with the state that Julian Edelman is in, he's old, he's about to turn to dust, that's what they have all around is just decent right now. Let's none. Neither of them are great. I'll, I'll say Julian Edelman's good right now, but he's he's looking old. So, guys, again, two and five. You really don't know the future of the quarterback position with this team. And as we talked about in another episode this week, I, we don't think Jared Stidham's the answer by any means going forward. Is it fair to blame this mess on Bill Belichick, the general manager? Because the team right now is shambles. Mike, let's start with you. What do you think? When I think of Bill Belichick and all he's done for this team over the years, let's not get it twisted. The man is the greatest coach of all time. Greatest coach of all time. But as a general manager, it's been a a roller coaster ride for Bill Belichick. And we're starting to see that. We're seeing that play out right now. It's played out over the years multiple times. But in my opinion, you had a guy in Tom Brady as a quarterback who made things look pretty even in the darkest hours. But Tom Brady's not here anymore. And it's now real the light is really being shined upon the fact that Belichick's not a great GM. And yes, they've made moves over the years. Like he said, in his own words, they've sold out the last five years to make Super Bowl appearances and make runs. Great. That's solid. You sold out. You went and got talent. You traded for Josh Josh Gordon, and you brought in. Uh, you tried to bring in Antonio Brown, and you signed. Tried to sign Demarius Thomas, and that didn't work out. You tried to trade for Sanu. You went out and made these trades and made things happen to help the offense. But you know what? You know a huge part of being a general manager. Yeah, you're making trades and signing guys. That's great, you know. But you know what's another huge part of being a general manager? Who you draft and develop. Who you draft and develop is a huge aspect of being a general manager. You can sign people. You can bring someone in and hope that they work out. You know, they they signed, they made a move for Randy Moss years ago and hoped that his attitude wasn't an issue, and it worked out. You know, they made moves for guys and took a chance on them. They worked out. Trade, signs, that's great and all. But if you can't draft and develop, it's going to eventually hurt you in, in the long run. And we're seeing it right now. This is a Patriots team who, like Belichick has claimed, they don't have money. They can't make moves. They can't make moves because they don't have money. But the guys that they have, you'd hope that they develop over time and turn into something. Right now, it's looking like, who is that? They don't have anybody like that, especially offensively. We know the draft picks Belichick has had over the You can probably count on one finger draft picks. <laughs> Sorry, one hand. I said one finger. One hand. They draft had picks. one good draft pick. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> you can probably count on one hand how many draft picks in terms of like offensive weapons have really panned out over the years for the for the Belgians. And I'm talking top draft picks. Yeah, they got Grob Gronkowski, you know, Aaron Hernandez, you know, James White. Uh, but like, who has really been drafted by the Patriots as an offensive weapon and made a huge impact? Don't tell me Julian Edelman, because wasn't he? Seventh round or something like that? Come on now. Was late, yeah. Very late. But the Patriots, when they have early draft picks, their offensive weapons don't really pan out. And it's because the drafting and the scouting, it just hasn't been working in terms of offensive weapons. Offensive line, they do a great job. Whoever they have scouting the offensive line, they do a solid job. But in terms of weapons for this team, and that falls under the Belichick umbrella of scouting and drafting, it hasn't panned out. And a lot of that, amongst a lot of other reasons, is playing out in this 2020 season. 
you, you know who it, it pains me every single week when you see this guy on the on Sports Center highlights all over your Twitter feed is DK Metcalf. Oh I mean, yes. man, the stunt to really hurt now. Yeah, <laughs> man, does that hurt? I mean, like, like we were we were. We talked ourselves, we do this every single year, too. And it's not just us, it's everybody. It's all Patriots fans. Whenever the Patriots draft somebody in the first round, we're always like, this is it. This guy is going to be awesome. And even when Nikhil Harry was drafted, everybody was like, okay. Fine. Why? But okay. And, and you see DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf, remember the big story was, oh, his, his, his three-code drill was bad. It was slow. Okay, well, you know, see how much that worked out? See how, see how much that affects him on the field? This guy is a beast. Meanwhile, you got Nikhil Harry, who's constantly hurt, and when he is on the field, really has just been mediocre so far during his time with the Patriots. So, Marv, throwing the question over to you. Is it fair to blame Bill Belichick for the mess that this Patriots team is currently in? Who else is there to blame? That's true. Who else is there to blame? <sighs> <laughs> it, it, it goes it, right there. It goes to Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick is the one sole person to blame for this whole mess. And listen, he's gonna come out and he's gonna give out his excuses that he's been on this past week, and they're all valid. They're all valid. No one's saying it's not valid. And Bill, we trust. Yes, we understand. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, quote, the, yeah, I've got that quote right here. Yeah. Please, so please. So Belichick was asked about the comments. Uh, and then potentially being an excuse for the lack of success this season. And he said that he, that that wasn't the case at all. Uh, that's regarding other comments. He said, look, we paid Cam Newton $1 million. I mean, it's obvious we didn't have any money. It's nobody's fault. That's what we did the last five years. We sold out and won three Super Bowls, played in fourth, played in a fourth, and played in an AFC Championship game. And this year, we had less to work with. It's not an excuse. It's just a fact. Well, first of all, I just want to address that last sentence. That is a fact, but it's also an excuse. You're not just saying that just because it's a fact. It's also an excuse for why you're playing this way. So go back to you, Marv. Right. So all of, everything Belichick said, like you just said, it's a fact and is valid, and we understand that. But in the past 20 years, and Mike, Mike harped on this as well, there's been questionable moves. A lot of journeymen have been coming through the Patriots. And you're like, well, if you just got a stud, you know, these issues wouldn't really be happening. But when you had Tom Brady as your, as your leader in your team, he was able to cover a lot of those things up. And you were able to have incredible fourth quarter comebacks. You were able to have, how did, the, how did they win this game? How did they pull it out? Incredible moments in the past 20 years. Now, Brady is gone. Last year, and we can even bring it up to last year, too, when Brady was there because the roster wasn't good. These journeymen are not going to pan out all the time. All of these moves that Belichick thinks, well, he's always going to find a diamond in the rough, those aren't going to work out. When you draft in the first and the second round, those things need to start to hit. You need to start trading for the right pieces. Yes, I know the Kyle Van Noys, and you're not always going to find those type of pieces. When you get rid of Wes Walker, you're not always going to be lucky enough to have a Julian Edelman to come up in the rankings because otherwise you would have been screwed. Moves like this are going to start to come back the other way. And now we're starting to see that, hey, Cam Newton has nobody to throw the ball to. Nick, you mentioned how, um, you know, the Patriots, if – a lot of teams were to lose their first two top two receivers, teams will be okay. I probably disagree with that. You take away anybody's top two weapons at receiver, they're probably going to look very glim. But then again, when you don't draft well and you have to count on an undrafted Jacoby Myers to lead the team in targets, things aren't going to look pretty at all. And this is this is what you're getting. Bill Belichick, he's a great Great coach, Mike mentioned it, but the G GM Bill Belichick is making it real hard for the G uh, for the coach Bill Belichick to work. But he still has time. This is a clean slate now, right? A whole clean slate. This is like the first year when he came into the New England Patriots. This is the team that you're given. How are you going to rebuild it? We can't just define Bill Belichick on this year right now and say, wow, this guy stinks. No. This is a whole new team, new quarterback, new regime. Let's see what quarterback you bring in. Maybe it's Cam or maybe it's a, it's a new young blood. Let's see what you bring in in quarterback. Let's see what the weapons you start to bring in. Let's see this defense that you're forming right now. It's not great, 
But, you know, we see J.C. Jackson. We saw Winovich when he was playing. We see Uche. We see little things here that could develop into something strong on this defensive side. Let's give Belichick some time to build this team up, and then we can judge him thoroughly. I just I just look at the in, – in a lot of it is draft picks, obviously, but even when he makes other trades too, like, yeah, I'm going to blame a lot of this on him because – I mean, even even going back to the Mohamed Sanu deal, you traded a second round pick for Mohamed Sanu, and that just, I mean, for the value that you got out of him, you couldn't really see it coming, I guess, but he didn't even make the roster the following season. A second round pick is valuable, and you just traded that for essentially a, a, a rental that was more so just a okay when he made it here. And a big part of the reason why I think there would be a lot more problems with the players that he brought in if he didn't have Tom Brady, because Tom Brady covered up a lot of those holes. He brought in a lot of guys that Tom masked the errors. Tom may look better, especially when he was in his prime, even in his late thirties, early forties, when he was still in his prime. I mean, guys, the GM is just making the, the job for the coach so hard. And just for the next few seasons, as long, as long as Bill Belichick's here, he has to figure it out. I don't. I don't want him to be cute anymore. I want him to go after talent. When there's a re, when there's a resounding like, yes, this guy is a talented player. Bring him in. Let's stop going for these guys that just nobody knows. And of course, Bill knows more football than any of us combined. But there are guys on the board too. And even just going back to the three draft picks, not including this year, the 2019 and 2020, Isaiah wins Sony Michelle in the first round in 2018. Nikhil Harry in 2019. Following that, we already talked about DK Metcalf. Calvin Ridley was picked between Isaiah Wynn and between Sony Michelle. And then Nick Chubb was picked after Sony Michelle. It's I mean, bad, Nick. offensively, Belichick and his team, whoever he has working around him offensively, drafting, drafting has been terrible. Defense, they do a solid job. They've gotten solid players Still throughout the draft. Defense. But offensively, they've taken a lot of L's every year. And like Belichick said, they have to sell out to, to make successful teams. They have to sell out because they can't draft solid players to join this team. I mean, he, he does what I do in fantasy football every year. <laughs> I trade all my picks for the next season just so I can try to win this year, and then typically sell I out. lose. You sell out because <laughs> you don't know how to scout and analyze talent through a draft. Yeah, you're right. I certainly don't know how to do that either in fantasy football. I've got no idea what I'm doing when I'm drafting, but I try my best. No, no, no. But <laughs> Bill, no, Bill knows what he's doing with defense. I think, I think defensively he drafts pretty well. Yeah, it's just is. the offensive side of the ball, especially when you look at teams like the friggin' Steelers. I don't know yeah. how they have loaded at wide receiver. They have the best every time. Like, <laughs> <they, they laughs> he looks like a. Done. It's they literally it next, every man, time. next man up in, in Pittsburgh. Next man up in Pittsburgh is usually a stud every year. Yeah, going back to what we said about if a team loses two receivers, would they still be okay? The Steelers would be just fine. Still, yeah, Steelers, Steelers are the team that they'll be good. They yeah. all the time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you, there's there's a lot of mess going on here that you can blame Bill Belichick, the GM. All right, guys, that was the CLNS Media Patriots Roundtable. Nick Qualia, Marvazan, Mike Molino. We'll get, we're going to be back next week for another set post-New York Jets game. Listen, I can tell you right now, this, this show is either going to be just an absolute meltdown next week or it's going to be like, okay, they beat the Jets. So we'll have plenty to talk about next week. Again, Nick Qualia, Marvazan, Mike Molino. Guys, we will talk to you then. Thanks for listening.